Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's battle is brought to you by Mighty Mouse and West Bend Corn Popper. In this corner we have Theater Popcorn. And in this corner we have Kettle Corn. Ready, begin. Okay, I read the instructions today for the very first time. It's been in the bottom of the box. It actually has instructions on how to get rid of this brown uh, burn area here by using lemon juice or vinegar. So I'm gonna do that maybe after this uh, cooking. I've had this a long time and I love it. But it calls for uh, 246 quarts and whether you have 246, you have one, two, or three tablespoons of oil one third, two thirds, or one cup of popcorn, and one, two, or three tablespoons of butter. So how much is a tablespoon? Well, and you might think it's this. Uh, this is what you have soup with, but that's called a tablespoon, but it's not a measured tablespoon. This is a measured tablespoon. How much is that? 15 milliliters. How much is that? Well, it's about that much. I've never measured. I fill up this side with popcorn, and then I put in this side the oil, make sure that both sides are covered and then I pop popcorn but today I got to be specific because I'm making theater popcorn okay since this thing calls for uh, I guess the max that it holds is six quarts and I'm only going to make uh, a two-thirds of a cup which is four quarts so it calls for two tablespoons and two tablespoons of butter so oil and butter now I'm going to replace that butter with something else there are two kinds of popcorn that I like to use. This is uh, what's called white popcorn. The shell is much, much thinner and, and much easier to digest and doesn't get stuck in your teeth as well. It has a nice snap to it and it turns to, tends to be more crunchy. This is yellow corn. It has a heavier husk and uh, it tends to be uh, a bit more difficult to digest. And for the kettle corn, I got this. I have never ever made kettle corn before. But the difference between a mushroom popcorn and the kind you're used to making that you would make theater popcorn with is that this is a butterfly popcorn and it goes boom, it flies outward. Whereas a kettle corn actually, like an implosion, it just expands all the white out like this. There are no wings on it, no butterflies. So this is better for putting coatings on it because if you use the butterfly popcorn for coating you're going to get so such a saturation on the inside and the outside of the popcorn with this one here you're only going to get it on the outside so that is the science behind making theater popcorn and kettle corn with the coin corn choices so let's talk about oils i have bought some of this stuff from uh, the big box store and uh, this does a pretty good job of giving you the colors you want but when you look at the ingredients it's nothing more than a little oil and coloring so what makes theater popcorn theater popcorn so it's in the salt theater popcorn is actually quite salty and i have found that this measuring cup which calls for one of these per um popping i'm i found that it's way too salty so this is actually measured out as a tablespoon those are basically the same size doesn't look like it so I'm going to use one half to two-thirds of this for the mighty pop popcorn salt flavoring so between these two you get a salty yellow popcorn that tastes good but to make a theater here's my final ingredient believe it or not this is what gives it that wonderful smell and that wonderful flavor. Now I have uh, run out of my last batch of coconut oil and it was a very strong odor of coconut, which I think may make a difference. This one does not have a coconut oil smell. It just looks and smells like maybe Crisco or something, but uh, it's what I have and this one I'm gonna use. Um, when I don't use this for making popcorn, I use uh, the standard oils. Now you can make popcorn, you can make actually make theater corn with this and this 
and have a fairly decent popcorn. Um, Kroger sells pure coconut oil uh, in a very affordable package uh, in comparison to the bigger one. And uh, it's also has no smell whatsoever. But uh, I use this for uh, making my soap. So let's get some measuring and popping. All right, remember I said I'm replacing the coconut, I mean the butter with coconut oil, and it requires two tablespoons. So how do I get a tablespoon out of here? Well, this stuff is really soft. So you just go like that, make sure it's pressed down, and trim it off. Since I've never ever measured before, you know, I've never had to be very exact. You'll get used to, you know, what's what by how it looks. So it feels like almost a waste to me to actually do this in measured amounts. Plus I'm messing up this thing. As you see how difficult it is to get out of there. So how much is two tablespoons of coconut oil? It's about that much. So I like to have this all melted and actually a little bit warm by the time I put the popcorn in. So I'm going to do that real quick. Here's a little tip for you. Since this stuff solidifies at room temperature, you don't want this going down the drain. Uh, I strongly recommend that for any oils that you cook with, that they don't go down the drain, that you throw them away in another container uh, if you've like done some heavy frying. So I got that pretty much clean. And so since I have the majority of this, my dish soap will take care of the rest. This stuff settles, and so you want to shake it up every time you use it. Make sure you get all that goodness mixed together. Okay, so my coconut oil is almost melted. And there's one. And I'm going to go, actually I'm going to do three. Now I'm not going to add the salt right now. I'm actually going to let the popcorn get a little hot. This does not solidify at room temperature, but I still don't like the idea of all that stuff going down my drain. Okay, today's theater popcorn. As you can see, there's actually a considerable amount of oil in there. I'm going to use the white corn today. I guess I could have opened this earlier, but at least now you know this is extremely fresh. And I like to buy it in these containers because then it, it keeps. So to show you that normally I just pour in and fill the side up, let's see how two thirds looks. That's almost exactly how much popcorn I normally do. So now is the point when you would put your lid on and uh, let this heat up. Give it a little shake, it just makes it mix faster. But I still have a little bit of time before it starts popping. And so I wanna get this salt in there before it gets too hot. I don't like to put the popcorn salt in too early. It just kinda gums up the process. So. That is uh, a little more than half. Put it right on the popcorn. You can see how it's actually turning quite yellow. So it's nice that uh, it came with a spoon. That's a, uh, I think a broccoli rubber band on broccoli or something something from the grocery store this lid is wonderful because if you wanted to put butter in but it is messy you can put butter up here and it'll drip in uh, we did that one time I never did it again so once this popcorn is popped then as soon as it stops popping I flip it over and uh, so it, it gets it out of the popper because it's quite hot and then I'll immediately put it inside of another bowl because this will have a lot of moisture in it and I don't want it going into the popcorn. So have a second bowl handy 
for when it's done popping. Since this is a popping bout, a knockdown, beat Bobby Flay, whatever you want to say, I'm going to label this to make it official. This says Theater I'm going to save the two bags and uh, maybe mix them. That might taste good. Theater popcorn saltiness and kettle corn sweetness together. Mm. Okay, I don't know that it's even been two minutes, but it's already popping. That's how efficient this thing is. The West Bend Stir Crazy. Now I had those ones that you put on the stove and you turn the crank uh, and they work okay, but they don't last very long. This thing here has lasted as long as two of those other ones. Stir Crazy is a good name for it because once it gets rolling, it kind of really pops crazily. And you can see that the wand is still going around in circles there. And it's just about done. I'm going to unplug it. Right about there. There it is, theater popcorn. So like I said, I want to get this immediately into another bowl. Wow, that wasn't even one cup of popcorn kernels. And that looks like more than six quarts. That's huge. Let's see. Oh, it's actually pretty good. I, it's drier than I thought. Since I put that extra oil in there, I thought it would be uh, a bit more moist. I mean, not moist, but it would have more oil on my fingers. But it's really not bad. I think I like this a lot. So that's my recommendation. West Bend Popper Act 2 Popcorn uh, from the Big Box Store, along with the Mighty Pop Salt. And last but not least, Coconut Oil. Give it a shot. You can adjust these ingredients any way you like, up or down. I think a little bit more up with the coconut oil next time as well. But the coconut oil does not have as much a coconutty flavor as I thought, so I really think that having the smell of coconut makes a difference in the flavor, at least for this popcorn. All right, it's time for kettle corn. I'm excited, it's my first time ever. I'm going to label my bag. Did I spell it wrong? K-E-T-T-L-E? That's right. Just doesn't look right. So I'm going to unbox so that you remember in the, the previous pop. We uh, opened this one here up so it was fresh. So this one here is open and fresh. Here we go. So that's what mushroom corn looks like. So some of the recipes that I found are anywhere from a uh, tablespoon, one and a half tablespoon of oil and sugar and a half a cup of corn to a half a cup of oil and sugar and a half a cup of corn. So this would be extremely oily. So I'm going to split the difference here and I'm going to go with a quarter on each. So how do you know what a quarter of a cup is? Uh, when you got this to measure with, so I'm going to be measuring out uh, with this, or I did the measuring out last time with this. So one tablespoon is 15 mils, and a quarter of a cup is 60 mils. So if you don't have a quarter of a cup, you can just measure out four of these. Now all of the instructions that I've uh, come across say to use a high heat oil, and I have no clue what a high heat oil is. Uh, I didn't look them up. And this is all I have right now. And this is not really a high heat popper. Uh, they talk about like 500 degrees so that it pops it really fast for uh, kettle corn. But this is just uh, actual ingredient is soybean oil. So I, I don't know what the temperature is at. I'm going to go with like I did before. Measure out a quarter of a cup. 
Now everybody else says let this oil get hot first before putting the popcorn in. Okay, so the oil is hot. One just popped. And as you know, the manufacturer but said you just... keep the lid on the popper at all times. But doing this kind of popcorn or not. I think I'll do it like that. That's probably more than two thirds because I spilled a lot. There we go. And right about the time that the first kernel pops. I'm going to quickly throw the sugar in it because you don't want the sugar to burn and you want it to caramelize a little bit, not much, or it'll turn brown. So since the oil is piping hot, it's going to be really, really close. There we go. does seem to be popping slower than my white corn does. Oh, there it goes. A lot of moisture. A lot of water running down. Okay, it has stopped. Woo! Right close to the boiling point. Get it out of the plastic. Hey, yeah, that looks pretty good. Now that it's done, uh, seasoned to taste and uh, some people like a lot of salt, some like a little. It really comes Compare. out of this salt shaker at all. But some does come out. So, ooh, that's got a lot of stickiness. Okay, I'm going in. I would say this is a light kettle corn, not too sweet. It's not like what you get at the parks where it's heavily sweet and heavily salted. Uh, and it's not lightly salted. So I would say that's right in the middle, right? What I expected. I'm going to show you the difference here from my white popcorn to what a standard kettle corn looks like. Okay, so that is a uh, white ballooning butterfly, whatever, and that is a mushroom. It almost looks just like a like a mushroom cloud where it like imploded, whereas this one exploded. So I think that uh, it is a proven, to me, fact that the mushroom corn makes better kettle corn and probably better for caramel corn or any kind of coating corn. But for theater popcorn, I think this one wins because this one here is more expensive and it has a nice crack to uh, pop to it. But uh, I think this one wins for theater and this one wins for kettle. I hope you enjoyed this, learned something as I did as I went along, and I appreciate you watching. Have a good day.